Thank you for listening and welcome to the Life Radio Show, a once proud member of the now defunct Eventide Entertainment Podcast Network. I'm your host, Don Smith. Our guest co-hosts, Nurse Susie and I, spend a Saturday talking with the cast of the upcoming cinema lexicon film, Black Wolf. First up, Andy Gudgeon is on the phone. If you enjoy the show, like and follow The Life 1069 on Facebook and Don Smith Comedy on Twitter. Or tune in live on Tuesdays from 7 to 9 p.m. on WWSU 106.9 FM. Or you can stream the show live at WWSU1069.org. A brutal presence overwhelms me. A brutal presence overwhelms me. I'm doing all right. I'm turning down the wrong. Uh, I'm I'm turning down the wrong knob. To get... <laughs> <laughs> you got a knob issue. I, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, let, let me get let me get things set up here. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Here we are. Hey, we're actually we're actually live right now. Hey, welcome to the live radio show. <laughs> Whatever the hell we're trying to do here this morning. I'm your host, Don Smith. I'm sitting in the, uh, we're not in the studio. We're not in the studio, and I'm not, any, well, I won't go into that. We're in, the, we're in <laughs> Wiley's. We're at Wiley's Comedy Club showroom. I'm sitting here with my guest co-host, Nurse Susie, is back in. Hi. Nur- Nurse Susie, this is Andy Gudgeon on the phone. Am I pr- pronouncing that right? You are. Andy? Okay, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Andy, this is Nurse Susie, my guest co-host for the uh, for the show. Hi, Andy. Hi. How are you? Great. How are you? I'm doing good. <laughs> so anyway, we're we're uh, we're trying to get some things together. We were supposed to have a table read uh, for Black Wolf today, and that that got canceled on us. So I, I, I've decided to take some of the cast and crew from Black Wolf and do some interviews with them. Uh, most of them didn't uh, didn't want to do it, but. <laughs> but <laughs> But Andy doesn't know the show as well, so uh, so, so she has agreed to do it, and uh, I am so sorry. But no, it's uh, see the phone's ringing here in the club already. People think that a comedy club stays open twenty four hours a day. I don't understand that. Anyway, uh, welcome to Life Radio Show. We're uh, it's it's been a weird day already, but uh, we're just we're just going to get right into things. Uh, Andy, how are you doing? I'm great, Don. How are you guys? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, how? Uh, I forgot where the hell I'm going already. This is. I said it's been a weird morning. Well, and you I, have a popular, uh, popular stuff going on in the background there. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's 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 what it is. It's that uh, damn phone ringing. It's, it's a popular club. Uh, it, it's a good thing, you know. Other, <laughs> I mean, I still don't make any money with it, but you know, it's a, <laughs> at least it's popular. People say, "Oh, Wiley's, I like that place." Yeah, right. you never, you never come. <laughs> <laughs> but how disappointed were you that the table read got canceled today? Well, I think that when you're working on a film with William Lee and you get a free Saturday, people probably take advantage of that. Exactly, so. <laughs> exactly. That's because that, yeah, he, he usually uh, usually Saturday mornings we're up way too early. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, you've been working with William for quite a while. You've been doing. You were in. Uh, what's the first one that you started in? What's, what's going on? The, the first there? William Lee movie was Black Mamba. Okay, okay. I couldn't remember if that was your. First. You played the White mm-hmm. Witch. The witch. And Ooh. Black, she, yeah, she was the, not just any witch. The white one. The white witch. <laughs> yeah, that yep, sounds like that. a lot of fun. It was white witch and with those tall white boots, and uh, so that was a lot of fun. That was my first time I got to work with you guys. Now, yeah. did you live in the movie? Live in um, the Like, was she killed in the movie? I thought oh, Black okay. Mamba okay. was a lot of... I, I, you know, um, I typically get killed. Um, it <laughs> seems like in a lot of the movies that I work on. Um, I have that same problem. <laughs> I, I, I in, in that particular movie, uh, the White Witch is a character where she they try to get rid of her quite a few times. Mm-hmm. And she just keeps coming back. So I think at the end of the movie, she does get hurt. But I think whether or not she lives is kind of up to your uh, okay. discretion. You're just so, you're, you're hoping to make the sequel. As well. I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Black Mamba too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. It'll just be Blacker Mamba. That's. <laughs> 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 <Yeah. It's> terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that, so, that's it, yeah, that's going to be the daughter coming back for revenge right, afterwards. Exactly, you know? exactly. Yeah. So it was, it was a lot of fun, but actually, um, but actually, uh, some of that was just kind of improv too, because when you work with William Lee. There's a script and there is a storyline, but sometimes on the fly, he'll oh, uh, yeah, throw yeah. a curve. So uh, with that, there was some props that were used uh, <laughs> with my uh, injury scene. And uh, I'm glad that he picked uh, what he did versus some other choices. So uh, there was uh, quite a few uh, selection of props that could have been used. So I was kind of standing there in a vulnerable place, wondering how I was going to... Um, you know how they were going to try to kill me and what prop they were going to choose. Oh yeah, that that's improv and all that stuff. Especially when you start using props, is a lot of fun. And William <laughs> William Lee movies that there's a script, then there's a revised script, there's a script revision that it just keeps going. Right. Really? <laughs> yeah. This, uh, the movie uh, Black Wolf will be, I think, my sixth movie with William. Oh wow! And uh, I learned in the first in the first one that you don't print a script. I, I have never, <laughs> since the first film I was in with him, I have never printed a script because that's a lot of wasted paper. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. And, and the, beauty with, the beauty of working with William is also, you know, like I said, just as you're filming on the fly, he might say, we're going to do this instead. Right, and, right. Uh, he gets all excited about it and then giggles and, uh, <laughs> and we do it and it works out great, so... Yeah, that's well, you have you have to learn to roll with the punches and just kind of go on the fly sometimes with a lot of independent film, or you never get them done. And that's one of the magical things about William is he always manages to get them out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which, that's- uh, yeah, that's it, which is hard to do. I have a lot of respect for any filmmaker that can actually get a film made, let alone uh, distributed. Right, right. It's it's so true, Don, and the number of films that I have worked on that are either still in post, maybe having editing issues or having funding issues, or um, maybe the producer or the director just kind of moved on to something else and kind of let it sit by the wayside. Right. Uh, it, it's Once you get into this, then you really, really respect a director and a you know, production company that actually does get the films out and distributed. It's incredible how many really never they might they might be made, uh, but or shot, but then they never you know yeah, they, go, past go any that. further. Yeah. They sit mm-hmm. on a shelf forever, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit frustrating to you know to work on something and then never see it, um, right? You know because of the different issues. So yes, absolutely. He knows how to get them made and uh, pretty pretty quickly too. You know he. Yeah, shoot maybe one or two days, (laughs) and then you're done. So, uh, yeah, so it's it's good. It's my third film with William. My second, I wasn't going to be in it, and he called me at the last minute and said, "Hey, uh, I need to do a an extra scene. Are you available?" I think it was maybe the night before or two days before, and I (laughs) I jumped in my car and I I ran up there, and then he handed me some. Um, some prop guns and a uh, a few other things and sent me running through a field and through a wood. So. <laughs> that sounds like fun. I mean, he yeah. sounds like fun yeah. to work with as well. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. And, you know, I think for most of us, you know, the passion is the not only the creative, the creative or creativity behind uh, bringing a script to life, but also the people that you work with. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That that's what really makes it fun. You turn into a family and, you know, I've always enjoyed coming up there, coming up to Wiley's and you Don, Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and that's what makes it so great is you have a, a big family who are like-minded and uh, then you get to see that magic come together. Yeah. And, and working with the same cast and crew several times is, I mean, you really do develop a lot of, a lot of great connections with people. I have, uh, I have a couple of comics I've invited on to sets here and there. And that's one of the things uh, that they tend to come away with is like, man, that, that just seems like a really cool family, really fun group of people to hang out with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it really is. And then as that grows, you, 
come across new projects and then you think of, you know, someone, oh, they would be perfect for this role or this is exactly what, you know, they're interested in doing next or um, you can kind of help, um, you know, put folks together so that you can work on new projects together. And so it makes it, it makes it really cool. Then you help each other along. Absolutely. Now, how long have you been, uh, how long you been acting? Years ago, I was in, uh, I was with an agency in Cincinnati and I focused mostly on uh, commercials and some modeling print. And, and I also uh, did theater and then I took a break I finished school, got a business degree, and started a company. It's called Apex 360. It's in northern Kentucky. And then after the company grew and could, you know, basically, um, you know, be on its own or I didn't have to work 80 hours a week anymore, I guess it's better. Uh, Then I got back into acting, and that was in about, I believe it was about 2016. I just saw a class advertised, and I decided to actually you know get some um you know get into some workshops and so i got back into it then and uh, yeah. i'm still fo- i'm focused on the film mostly right now um i do have another agency and that's Heyman talent in cincinnati okay. and uh, then i also uh, have a team who we've started uh, creating some short films for some film uh we're going to send them to some film festivals and then we've also entered some competitions. So there is a film competition called, um, it's a 48 hour film competition in Cincinnati. Okay. I I believe I remember. So we put a film together for that. And, uh, and just, you know, and it was just a bunch of us who said, Hey, do you have a team? Do you have a team? And, and all of a sudden I said, well, wait a minute, (laughs) let's just make our own team. I said, we don't, you know, we've never done this before. And if we at least turn something in on time, like, and have a great time, then that's success to me. And we ended up winning third place. Nice. Oh, cool. Yeah. 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 So then we made another that we've just submitted to a winter film competition. So uh, we wait to find out until the beginning of next month to see how we fare in that one. So and uh, it's a lot of the same team, and uh, then we've added on, you know, added on a bunch of people too. So, so uh, how yeah, do these film fun. these film competitions? How do they work? I was even unaware that there was such a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah Cincinnati um, has some great opportunities for, you know, films and the competitions, and then of course, you know, a lot of folks come down from you know your area up in Dayton and and. Uh, so, yeah, we're just starting to get involved in them. And then there's also so many film festivals. So what we might do with this last one, it's called Nevis. We might uh, end up taking that to some festivals. Um, I just got back from a film festival in uh, Buford, South Carolina. And it's so much fun just seeing film- filmmakers from all over uh, I bet. come together. Yeah. And, uh so yeah, it's exciting and So you, and you said just, you you start did you start out in theater? You said you you had done some theater. Is that where you started and where you got bit by the acting bug or Mhm. Yeah, I was one of the kids that, you know, when family was over, I was always in front of them dancing or um, you know, putting on a show. But yeah. uh so I I was kind of always that kid anyway, but I did start with theater. So and yeah. I'm glad that I had that experience because um, it's a lot, you know, different, Oh, absolutely. Um, but it, but it really lends to uh, the experience. And I think growing your craft. Right. Do, do you so. prefer film to live theater? Cause I'm sometimes, mm. you know, sometimes, some, I've, I've always been partial to theater, but I just don't have time for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's you took the words out of my mouth. I, I was, uh, approached to be in a theater production last year and I was, as much as I I miss it because I miss that live audience interaction right um you know which you have at Wiley is it you know that's it's it's built on that you know um and feeding off of each other and so right. I really do miss that I miss the 
you know, the laughter in the crowd, if the scene was supposed to be funny and you're like, yes, they got it. Right. Or, um, you know, the applause at the end. But at the time, it's it's so time consuming. So that makes it really difficult. Um, but so I, so I haven't done it in a while. But I think that's something that you also get the bug for. Oh, and, ab- yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I definitely see something in my future again, but. Um, you know, not, not right now. I'm just right. focusing on the film. Yeah. Cause and, the, theater, I, I love it, but it's, I mean, that's months out of your life that you're committed to this thing. And it's as, as much as I love, because I started, I think I was 25 years old when I, the first time I ever took the stage. Cause I wasn't <laughs> that kid. Yeah. I, <laughs> really? I, I was not that kid. And then when I was 25, I got cast and it was a uh, Dayton theater guild. I just randomly showed up. And uh-huh. auditioned, having never done it before, mm-hmm. and ended up getting cast. And I think it it was a weird production. It was called Epic Proportions, and okay. most uh, other than like the two, three main characters, everybody else played like five characters. I think I had seven. Oh my! Plus, I was all the off stage narration. So, oh wow! <laughs> so that was my introduction to it, and that it really did. I I loved. I love doing theater, but it's just such so a time just commitment. Right to, in. Just I just dove, dove right, right in. I just dove right in. Took yeah. that chance. And... It, yeah, well, the fun think... part was I walked into the theater, and of course, community theater, everybody knows everybody. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nobody knew me. They walked in, they handed me a paper, said, well, just fill this out with your previous acting experience. And I basically <laughs> put my name on it, handed it back to them. <laughs> <laughs> they said, well, even, even high school, if you did plays in high school, it's like, yeah, I didn't. <laughs> I, this, I've never done this, and yeah. I I walked into the uh, into the uh, theater where they're doing the auditions, and there's the director and the stage manager, the producer, and it, I was of course it's theater, so I'm 15 minutes early, so I had to wait for everybody else to get there. Right. 10 minutes late because <laughs> it's theater because it's theater it's not a film <laughs> exactly and uh, everybody starts coming in and everybody knew everybody and the director producer everybody on a first name basis and I'm thinking what the hell am I doing here I'm not Aww, gonna get <laughs> yeah <laughs> but no it, it ended up being a lot of fun and I I got addicted to it I've done several local theater productions up until I got so busy that I couldn't do them anymore that's kind of mm-hmm. how I got into comedy mm-hmm so, and I and I yeah. tried film a couple times mm-hmm. without much success until probably the last five years. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I think having the theater foundation definitely helps to go into film. Oh yeah, um, yeah. So the, the only like... the only difference is toning it down a little bit because mm-hmm. sta- right. stage you have to emote so much more and you have to make so such exaggerated everything because mm-hmm. it's stage. Right. I, so I can see that. Yeah, you can be a little more subtle on camera, mm-hmm. which is one of, one of the challenges of it. If you just because I remember the first film I did after doing nothing but theater, the first film I did, they had to keep telling me to bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say I don't see you doing anything subtle, so <laughs> I, I'm surprised. Well. I- I, is that, I, I'm not sure if that's a compliment. <laughs> you decide. Okay, we'll, call, okay. we'll call it spirited. Yes, spirited. That's a good there, one. Yes, perfect, thank you. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> I don't know. I've had some subtle characters. Not just not in William Lee movies. Right. <laughs> I, don't think there, I don't think a subtle character exists in a William Lee movie. <laughs> <laughs> so out of, out of all the characters you've played, not just in William Lee, but out of all the characters you've played, what's been your favorite one or what's the one that had the most impact on you? You know, I would say it's not the, this isn't um, because of the character. It was more because of the experience. Uh, I shared a lead with my daughter in a movie, uh, in a film, a short film. And she, she's, she's always been, you know, into um, performing and theater and vocals. And she's always kind of, you know, has the same passion that I do. But she had never been in a movie. So it's it wasn't really one that I read like, oh, I have a passion to be, you know, in this. But it the audition was calling for a real mother and daughter if possible. Hmm. And so I talked to her about it and 
And I said, hey, do you want to go for this? And she was older than they were asking for as well. Like, I think by a couple years. So she said, sure, let's try it. And so we auditioned. And um, when we auditioned, we actually worked the scenes out. So our audition was, you know, kind of a mini production, I guess. And we auditioned and, and sent it in. And the director said, when, because I was honest, you know, I said, listen, she's older than what you're calling for. Should we go ahead and submit? He said, it's probably not going to work out. I just want to be honest with you. But yeah, go ahead if you guys want to. So he came back and he said, I can't imagine anybody else doing this. I want you guys. And so it was long and hard and late nights and in a, you know, in a woods until late at night and uh, a lot of outdoor shooting and it it was tiring. Um, We were like over two hours away from home. So we shoot every weekend and drive back. And so it was exhausting. She would fall asleep and then uh, we'd have to like wake her up and do a wardrobe change and then (laughs) have her keep going. Please. Did she love it? She loved it. And it was a great experience, but she's like, I'm good for a while now. (laughs) (laughs) Like it was just a lot. Hmm. Um, But having that experience together, the two of us and, you know, me kind of being able to help coach her and see what she could do and, uh, and to have that on, you know, film now forever is uh, really cool. (laughs) So that's been like my favorite overall experience because I was able to work on a project with her and she killed it. I'm like, you are much better than me. (laughs) So um, that that's been the favorite. The most exciting, I think, is I got to uh, go and film some promotions for Bad Boys 3 in Atlanta. Oh, cool. So I didn't get to see Will Smith or Martin Lawrence, but to be on set for that um that was that was really cool that was a yeah. lot of fun and uh so i've got to have small um little parts or being on uh set for some of the big pictures that have come to cincinnati as well but you know like you can hardly see me like in some of them or you know i go running by like, <laughs> i could have done that in my kitchen you could have watched me run by you know but just right. being on set and um, you know, meeting a lot of awesome people and it, that those are really fun too. And you learn so much. Right. Well, it's, uh, so I, I have a lot of favorites, but for different reasons, I guess. Right. Right. <laughs> well, you probably learn from every single experience, so it's worthwhile. Well, yeah, absolutely. And I think that since I have the business mind and the entrepreneurial spirit, I watch everything, so I'm not there to just do my little piece. I watch, you know, how the light, they're, how they're doing lighting on different sets and how they're doing cameras and how they're communicating and to see the difference, oh. even like with safety on a big set, you know, a big Bad Boys 3, mm-hmm. um, you know, they literally on that on that set, they literally have someone who is just specifically walking around with sunscreen. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, I want to be that girl. You know, I want to be like that person. Job. They are the sunscreen person <laughs> yeah. for the set. You need sunscreen. Do you need sunscreen? They right. have a water person. Do you need a water? Do you need a water? <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, but I just like to really get outside of myself and learn everybody's, you know, peace or at least respect each person's uh, contribution. And I think that that helps me grow a lot in working with different sets in different directors and different budget levels right because everyone does things a little bit different um each director is definitely has their own way of doing things so it's uh interesting yeah it's it's one of the interesting things i I think about film is just seeing how all of it comes together because i mean there's so many different moving parts at the same time that Mm -hmm. has well, same same with theater. I mean, you you see it build over time into something, and it films a little bit different because you know you see all the parts being made, but you don't see a final. You're not the one that sees the final project coming together until last minute, and you just have, 
You just have memories of everything that happened, whereas with theater, you see it build each time you're on, each time you go in to rehearse. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's a little yeah. little bit different, but it's still that whole uh, community building thing that's kind of interesting to me. Yeah, the, I think the biggest thing that I, that I've lost in some of the um, productions is, you know, you come in, you do your little piece, and you might not have even met everyone in the movie, you know, right. so maybe at a premiere or something, you're like, oh, you're in this? Oh, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then And then you sit down to watch it, and then what comes up on the screen you're like oh my gosh i had no idea that that's yeah. what <laughs> you know that that's what you know the director was going to do with all these little pieces um you know so it's it's uh oh, kind of wild to see that yeah creative yeah. process and and you're like building a house but you're only putting like so many little you know bricks bricks right, on it and right. you walk away yeah. and come back and it's done and you're like oh my gosh I have no idea. yeah it sounds really cool as to how you know all that comes together I'm definitely not in film yeah. I'm not in theater I'm in the medical field so <laughs> all of it is exciting to me I can imagine well if you hang around long enough and we'll grab you and there you go, yeah. <laughs> I can Tell definitely you. put sunscreen on I can pass out water <laughs> I well, can... especially in Williams in Williams movies, you might be putting sunscreen on, and all of a sudden he grabs you and does something with you. And oh yeah, yeah. in any movie. first aid, I can do any kind of first aid. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I always I always love when an extra comes on set, and the next thing you know, they have a speaking role, and it's like, how did that happen? <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, a, that's so cool. Yeah. though. it yeah. does. It does happen though. It's yep. just kind of uh, part of putting in your time. Yeah, and absolutely. I when I first got back into it, I wanted to figure out, you know, who the players in Cincinnati were and what agencies were, you know, the best and um and so I literally just started from the ground up and I found a um an extra uh casting and went and just, you know, I, it, that's how I got back into it. You know, mm-hmm. I started learning people. The first, the very first person that I met on set, um, I'm still friends with. And, oh, uh, nice. yeah. yeah, so I met him, I met him out on the sidewalk when we were parking. And, oh. uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so it's, and then I, you know, just kind of bounced around and did that for a while. And again, just kind of watched and learned and, um, and then, uh, you know, kept taking classes and, so it's it's good. It's exciting. Mm-hmm. I uh, I built a website yesterday. Oh, that, <laughs> that is exciting. It's, <laughs> it's, I'll, I'll it, make uh, sure we tag that when I put. The oh gosh, in. tag it. Well, I was at I was at uh, at a little uh, restaurant last night with a friend, and the server she was like, "You look so familiar. <laughs> How do I know you? You look so familiar." And I said, "Oh." I built a website today. You must have been on it. <laughs> that quick. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. It's just one of those things like I should have done so long ago. Oh. And, uh, you know, I just, I'm like, oh, you get busy. and. Oh, yeah. And, I, I, uh, I've had a website for like four years now. I haven't updated it in like two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> the, the last thing I have on there is like, oh, bought a comedy club. And it's like, yep, yeah, I have had no time to post anything <laughs> since. That's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, there's so many social media outlets now. Oh, you yeah. You know, it's, it's uh, hard to keep up with everything. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> well, I think I'm going to take a break real quick. We're going to come back and do some news stories if you're wanting to stick around for that. But I've got to take a little break. I think I'm going to end the live stream because I think the web connection here is just dropping most of the frames anyway. <laughs> so, <Aww. laughs> so I'll have to figure out something else. But the, we'll drop the live uh, Facebook live stream. But we'll keep going with uh, with Andy Gudgeon when we come back. So okay, stick thanks, around. Sir. must have come down and placed the crown of knowledge upon your head. Well, they left me without to deal with the situation on my own instead. Must be nice to be sure, come from a 
place so secure When ignorance is the only case I can plead But I was impressed with the scope and the breath Of the wisdom that you had for me You said I know it hurts But you need to hear it It could possibly make you the person I think you should be You felt I didn't see reality I felt reality was all that I saw It was quite a relief to belie my belief That I knew reality at all They say the world is made for lovers But who are they and what do they know They can't see the tears that I'm crying And the drinks that I'm buying To make your memory go You said I know it hurts But you need to hear it It could possibly make you the person I think you should be If not for you then for secrets that are out <laughs> i was looking at your i was looking at your page don and uh i saw that at um autumn hatcher yes yeah yeah did uh it was up there she uh i was in a movie with her it's oh, not really? out yet yeah oh cool um and uh that was i guess the summer um shoot i don't know it's all running together i don't know if it was last summer or i guess it was last summer um, it's called All Who Follow. Oh, yeah. You were in All Who Follow? I got killed uh-huh. in All Who Follow. You did? Yeah. I got oh, killed in All Who Follow. Yeah, I got, I got cool. ran over by a Mack truck. <laughs> nice. Did, did, you, did you film on the, that guy's property? That crazy? Oh, yeah, back in the, with the trailer back in the yeah, back? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that, that trailer ended up being my home. I, that was... Oh. Where where my character lived, and I got dragged out, and they actually ripped my heart out of my chest. Oh my god! <laughs> well, the and guy that we're actually I I started recording, so we can go ahead and talk about this somewhat. Oh on yeah, the, so welcome back to the Life Radio Show, anyway. <laughs> but yeah, that trailer. Oh man, did you go inside of it? No, were oh. you talking about the the seventies trailer? Yeah, way yeah. back in the back of that property, across this little concrete bridge. Yeah, it was a mess back there. Yeah, and that, yeah, that trailer stunk. Oof. <laughs> but I like uh, that. no, that uh, interesting story about that. My uh, this was shortly after my wife had moved out, and I actually uh, I actually invited her to the set because she didn't have anything to do. So I told her, I said, "Well, hey, you want to die in a movie?" 
So there are texts between me and Autumn Hatcher because I worked with Autumn and Michaela Michaela Quill, and I worked with Autumn and Michaela in a different uh, a different se- a series. I actually played Autumn's dad. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we. Uh, we had talked about it. so there are messages back and forth between them about basically it could be used as evidence it's actually i was talking to him about how bloody i want my wife's death to be oh <laughs> <laughs> so yeah she actually played my wife in the movie and there was no script for it and we just started off uh, in the trailer having an argument <laughs> well that was complete oh natural. yeah yeah it, it just it just flowed <laughs> like it's live. Yeah, because the director said, well, your wife's a great actor. It's like, that wasn't acting. <laughs> but the, the funny thing is, they were really supposed to, uh, I, I told him, I said, I want I want her to get really bloody in this, because this is going to be her first film experience. I just want mm-hmm. her to get the full, she got like one little drop of blood on her shirt oh, the whole time. I'm laying on the ground. They, uh-huh. <laughs> I'm laying on the ground, first of all, being straddled by Michaela, which uh, the wife couldn't handle so much of that, so she walked off. Oh, God. <laughs> she got tired of looking at that, because you know how films are. You have to do the same take over and over again. Oh, oh yeah. And, uh, yeah, so the whole time I have this 18-year-old straddling me. Oh, my God. But oh, my gosh. The, but the, the, she was ripping my heart out of my chest, and the way they were <laughs> filming it, she, they, they wanted to pull the heart up and have it just dripping with blood. So I am drenched. With blood, where I, I, it's like no, the, she was supposed to be drenched. She's got one little spot on her. I am soaked, laying in the dirt for two hours. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, Karma. that's that's what it was. But that's the argument Karma. was real. The, the argument was realistic. It was. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh! It was fun well, though. But yeah, I didn't know you were involved in that one. Mm-hmm, see, that that's yeah. what we were just talking about. You make a movie and then you're like, I didn't know you were yeah. in that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I um I filmed um down in Aurora one day or two days and then uh also on that same property where this scene was that you're referring to. Right. But the gentleman that owns the property, he's spirited. Yes, yes. <laughs> eccentric choosing my words right oh um, yeah we thought there and, were going to be some gunshots when we were there yeah yeah <laughs> it's it's definitely another world yes. um but the the director said um he's gonna drive a mac truck and run you over <laughs> so i'm like wait a second yeah. he's what? gonna be the one driving the truck oh like, yeah that would have been that would have worried me right there oh yeah yeah <laughs> So I literally had to, um, as you go down the drive into the place, it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a grade. So I had to stand in the street in front of this truck while he came at me and, uh, at like uh, the right timing. And then at one point to make the scene work, he had to just like stop the truck and put it in park or whatever he was doing. I'm hoping it was in park. <laughs> and, uh, and I had to like stand on the front of it, like, like an impact shot. So the truck was so big and, and it was on that grade. And I was so, I mean, I'm five, seven, but in standing in front of a Mack truck, that's coming down a hill at me. It, I was felt right. very small. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, so we'll see, you know, it, that that's not out yet, but uh, I definitely got hit by a Mack truck in that one. So. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, Even I, to this I, day that's... when I see, like, Mack trucks coming down the highway or whatever, I look at that grate <laughs> in the front, and I'm like, yeah. been, my face has been slapped <laughs> right up against that grate, and I know what that feels like. <laughs> yeah. You just have bad flashbacks. When... Oh, gosh. Right? Yeah, it's... I'm excited to see that one, though. It, it should be a really good film. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't heard a whole lot about what's going on with it yet. I know he was getting ready to do some uh, some festivals with that. I thought. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that that's that's frustrating too. When you know they go into festivals and then you have to wait for the festival circuit to finish, right? Um, before it gets you know yeah, uh, distributed you, or. Yeah, you never know when something's going to come out, too. Because there was something, uh, the TV series that I was in called uh, Boggy Creek, the Bigfoot series, which is available on Amazon Prime right now. I have to throw that out there. But it, uh, 
we felt that it came out. I had no warning it was coming out. I kind of forgot what all we did. And uh, it's six episodes, but they all came out at once on Amazon Prime back in October. And wow. We had filmed them like almost three years ago. I had like barely even had a beard in this thing. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I forgot we actually, I think three or four episodes, Wiley's is one of the main uh, scenes. Because oh, wow. It, 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 cool. I completely forgot that we used that as like their neighborhood bar. So mm. yeah, it was uh, it was neat because I was watching, and after my after my uh, episode, I was I kept watching, and it's like well, that's Wiley's. Well, that's yeah. Wiley. <laughs> Holy crap, that's Wiley's too. So yeah, that was kind of fun. <laughs> but it's it's yeah. neat when you you don't see them or hear anything about them for a long time, and then all of a sudden they're out there. Yeah, you do forget. I uh, when I was building that website yesterday, I was uploading my resume to it and I, I opened my resume because I thought, oh gosh, this needs to be updated. And I was looking at it and I thought, oh my gosh, I forgot about that or never seen that or, you know, so uh, so I kind of keep a track of it on my Instagram page a little bit. So right. when I'm working on something, I'll put a picture of the you know, the um, you know, the poster um, or some kind of shot about it and then that way I can use my Instagram as kind of like a timeline as well to remember what I work on and when. So hmm. it's not just for, you know, it's there not just go. for um, promotion. It's so I can keep track. Reminders. My Little resume. daily <laughs> reminders. Yeah. All right. We have t- a couple time. the time for a couple. We have time mm. for a couple <laughs> of news stories. Out. I'll, get, I'll get there. I'll get there. All right. Alaska-based airman. Uh, airman. 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 It's a superhero. An Alaska-based airman uh, was punished last week for purportedly uh, uh, peeing in an office coffee maker, according to a report. Uh, The incident was reported in a newsletter written by the legal office of the Anchorage Joint Base, Ellendorf Richardson, on February 13th, although many of the details remain a mystery. According to the newsletter, the airman first class violated two articles, one being Article 92, dereliction of duty, quote, for failure to refrain from urinating in the <laughs> office coffee maker. Oh my God. I didn't know that was actually part of their articles. I guess it's happened before. <laughs> uh, oh <my> gosh. <laughs> the airman also allegedly violated Article, 8, Article 86, absent without leave for five days away from duty. So uh, he had just mm. watched Waterworld. <laughs> with <laughs> Kevin Costner, and he decided he was going to use Mr. Coffee to p- purify his urine. Oh, his my goodness. Urine. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, you know, it's another it's... Bear Gryllis thing, maybe. <laughs> There's just a lot wrong with that whole article. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like that they uh, dereliction of duty for failure to refrain from <laughs> urinating. <laughs> failure to refrain, as if that's... Well, I think that's probably pre-printed, and then they write on, you know, peeing in the coffee pot. Okay, or, you okay, know. yeah. You don't think it's actually yeah. part of yeah, their pooping in their the trash bylaws. can? Yeah, yeah I mean, they it, probably what, it, what have you? What it, relieving yourselves <laughs> wherever, right. yeah. wherever it's happening. Yeah, yeah. He was relieved of duty. No. Oh gosh, <laughs> <laughs> he was relieved. All right. <laughs> <laughs> A surfer has told how he fought off a great white shark by punching it in the eye after it attacked him. Uh, Nick Minogue from uh, New Zealand, the city of Auckland, uh, was bitten by a shark on Saturday uh, in the country's, uh, wherever that is, somewhere in New Zealand. That's all okay. we need to know. Yes. He told, which, if somebody punched a shark in the face when he was being attacked, most likely it's going to be New Zealand or Australia. There's no other. Right. I can't think of a lot of other places where they think, I'll just punch him in the face. He'll go away. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see that happening in Florida, right. or California. We're, we're wimps here. Right. We're- uh, yeah, he told the New Zealand Herald, I was just paddling along and got hit by the side of my elbow and forearm. By the time I realized what was going on, its teeth were definitely latched on the front section of the board. Uh, Mr. Minogue, who's 60 years old. Oh, my gosh. Which, yeah, that's, that's a tough old guy. There. I think he has a history of yeah. doing this. <laughs> I think he goes yeah, out he's and just, asks for it. Yeah, he's he's an old school shark boxer. Is what <laughs> yeah, this, this wasn't his first yeah. time. Right. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Minogue, age 60, said he had he had heard sharks don't like being punched in the nose or eye. 
Really? That's I've <laughs> heard that too, though, in other stories where people would Are have there to... a lot of animals that do? Well, you know, I'm not sure, but <laughs> if, if a shark has got a hold of me, I might try out the old Three Stooges, you know, poke them in the eye type right. thing. Oh, I don't know. Oh, why shark, eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, Mr. Minogue said, so I actually shouted at it to fuck off <laughs> and went to punch it in the eye and missed. <laughs> Oh, God. Whoops. <laughs> so, yeah, he was, t- I guess, just screaming expl- expletives at it was enough to really chase it away. Well, then... that reminds me of something I read about this man. I think maybe I even seen the video of this guy in Australia. Was This kangaroo was attacking his dog. Oh, and he went up and punched yeah, it. Yeah, totally but... just knocked this kangaroo <laughs> out. So <laughs> I guess that's just how you're taught yeah. out there. I guess. The be as, just as wild insulted. as the wild animals. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, gosh. I just think when I think of kangaroos in that story, I think of, uh, remember the cartoons where the kangaroo, like, uses its back foot? Yes, and just, like, use you as a punching bag. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Kangaroo Uh, kangaroo boxing. Yeah. (laughs) I'm just going to name kangaroo boxing is going to be the possible name of the episode here. Shark. <laughs> I like the shark boxing though. That shark boxing, a little yeah. different. That is that is because kangaroo <laughs> boxing. That's pretty common. Shark boxing. Yeah. is that's a whole. We've new already realm. seen yeah. the video, yeah. so exactly. We need exactly. to move on to the shocks. <laughs> uh, well, this... I think the shark just got his feelings hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. So I can't, I can't <laughs> believe he told me to fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> it's, a sen- it's a sensitive shark. <laughs> it's a sensitive. Yeah. Shark. <laughs> It's like, why is he so mad at me? <laughs> I'm just doing what sharks do. I can't Aww. believe he. I can't believe he got so mad. <laughs> You're gonna make me feel bad for the sharks, and the next time I'm in danger, I will. I don't want to hurt its feelings. <laughs> I let it eat my leg off. <laughs> yeah, just, just, oh. want, just want a little taste. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> didn't know that's what the shark sounded like, did you? Oh, that's right. It's okay. <laughs> Teach your friend a little shark, that's all. <laughs> Just a little, little taste of that New Zealand surfer, that's all I want. <laughs> You've got to stop. <laughs> uh, a Michigan man was attacked uh, by his samurai sword-wielding partner last month after he allegedly didn't buy marijuana for the suspect, according to a report on Wednesday. Uh, Neil Patrick Wasinski, 28 years old, was hit with various assault charges on January 18th, two days after allegedly punching the victim's rib cage and stabbing him with a 21-inch, <laughs> 21-inch sword inside the suspect's apartment. Uh, still armed with uh, the bloody sword, Wasinski chased the 23-year-old victim into the parking lot uh, before they both took refuge in their separate apartments, the victim said. Uh, Police were called to the scene around noon on January 16th when they found the victim smoking a cigarette while holding a bloody towel to his side. The news website said he suffered multiple stab wounds, stab wounds to his arm and torso and was taken to the hospital in critical condition. He has since recovered. (laughs) Well, you know, they're having that samurai exhibit at the Dayton Art Institute. Oh, oh really? God, he yeah. wants. Yeah, he should stay away from that. He should that's, not. Yeah. Well, that, that's going to be an awkward walk to the dumpster with your garbage. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Got my uh, weed yet? <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> oh. Yep, next time, yeah. buy the man some weed. <laughs> right. Just, oh, a, right. just a little bit of weed will he keep just, you from being stabbed with a samurai yeah, sword. Yeah, gets rid of all anger and angst right. and. Save your life. Why, why did they have a samurai sword to begin with? That's You don't have a samurai sword I, at I, home? I, 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 I guess I need to get one. I must be in the minority. <laughs> right? Actually, I do. I have a yeah. samurai oh, sword at the house. So. He does. And... Um, I bought my son one. I, I call well, me crazy. <laughs> um, Can from I a, Amazon from an that? <laughs> est- well, this was like an estate sale. And this was a really nice old... So he keeps it under his bed. I'm like, put that away. I never want to see it again, but here. <laughs> yep. Happy birthday. Put this yeah. away. Yeah. Don't tell your dad. <laughs> yeah. Because we don't want your dad to have it. Yeah. Uh, I think we'll do one more and then we'll, uh, then we'll have to end 
the session, but let's see what we got here. Uh, Someone else getting attacked by something. Most likely, most likely. <laughs> uh, no, we'll, we'll end on a happy story. In uh, Virginia, letting an F-bomb fly in public could get you slapped with a misdemeanor and up to $250 fine. Profane swearing has been illegal in the Commonwealth since 1792 when the fine was 83 cents. Just oh. what bleeping words were banned? Well, the state code doesn't say. But on Wednesday, <laughs> legislators said to hell with the anti-swearing law. The Virginia Senate voted to repeal it just weeks after the House did the same. And now Governor Ralph Northam's signature uh, it awaits Governor Ralph, Ralph Northam's signature. Uh, Northam's spokesperson, uh, Elena Yaromsky... Wow. Wow. Uh, tell, tell, tells NPR the governor uh, will review the bill when it gets to his desk, ag- adding it's past time we swore off the antiquated policies of the past. If he signs the bill, Virginians will be able will be legally able to uh, curse to their heart's content starting July 1st. I would have ended up in jail oh, for not yeah, being absolutely. able to afford to pay the fines yeah. of my potty mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a like a Swear jar. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, the Virginia Commonwealth swear jar. Yeah, is it? what's the current rate? For the swear jar? I think it said yeah. 250 Is that what it said? 250 now? Yeah, two, yeah. Up to misdemeanor and up to a $250 fine. Yeah. Okay, well. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do all that. No, no, no. That's... <laughs> I would move. I would literally move out of... I, mean, I, I, I think moving? I got fined twice just on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Green. One of them was just reading an article about a New Zealander that punched a shark. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, um, gosh. Yeah. I would have to be like, Susie, why are you moving out of Virginia? Well, yeah. I can't you afford to live here. Yeah. I, I just go to the state line and shout all day long. <laughs> there you go. Like, that would be perfect for the Trinity State. Yeah, yeah right? right? Come and get me. Come and get me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go right across the bridge yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yell, and then run back to the other side. Yeah, they, yeah, there, uh, there would have to be a bunch of people doing that. I know that would be the first thing that would cross my mind to do, Absolutely. especially if I was close to the state line and got fined for that. Yeah, I'd go right across, and then they'd, they'd probably knock well, me out, and drag you, me across the border, and find. What me if again. you wrote it down? Like, could you write it down on like a poster board and walk it and hold it? Hold You're it not up. shouting it. It's not coming out of your mouth. That's true. That's See, true. I would How try would to work my way around the, it. If you weren't the one that wrote it. Right. You no, know, somebody one? wrote it for Yeah. That, how do you trace that back yeah. to the original criminal? <laughs> what if somebody <laughs> left It's a organized curse word. swear crime. Yeah. That's what, <laughs> what if there was a bad word written down and left on my front porch? I would I'm definitely. I'm sure that's happened to you a I, lot. <laughs> <laughs> I would pick up the poster and I would walk through town pointing at it, you know, who yeah. did this? <laughs> <laughs> I Somebody's get getting fined. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh and, well and if someone tells you that you can't do something doesn't it make you just want to do it even that much more oh so absolutely. bad absolutely oh, so bad <laughs> <laughs> all right well i think we're gonna have to wrap up uh i hate to do it because this has been a lot of fun andy i really appreciate you calling in to talk to us oh well thanks absolutely. for having me Don. it's nice to meet you Susie. nice to meet you i've learned a lot actually oh, from gosh. listening to you so yeah me too <laughs> <laughs> oh, but my! Uh, we're like, we're here to teach. We're here to teach. I, I, I need to order a samurai sword. Well, I need to punch a shark if it comes, yep, and I yep. should never pee in the work coffee pot. Right, um, right. So Which... I've. I've, these these are things show. society wouldn't know if it weren't for my show. You know what, though? Like, I mean, <laughs> if you're on a boil advisory and there's no fresh water, some of these coffee drinkers can yeah. get desperate. There you go. Well, yeah, I, you I, gotta, we don't know do what you got to do. The, yeah. the last time I was up there at, at Wiley's, John, a couple of weeks ago, um, I had some of your coffee, and I will say that it was really, really good. So whatever right. you're doing. Right. <laughs> I, I did not let anybody pee in it this time. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> whatever your secrets are. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate you calling in. Uh, check out uh, andygudgeon.com. The new <laughs> website she's built. Uh, that, yeah. that, that's not exciting. Every, not <laughs> yeah. everyone at once. I don't want it to crash. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, don't right. crash. Don't crash the site. <laughs> I understand. Uh, big day. <laughs> All right. Well, I look forward to working with you on on Black Wolf. 
Likewise. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll probably see you in a couple of weeks for some filming. That sounds good. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Thanks a lot for calling. We'll catch you later. Bye bye. Thanks Take care. so much, guys. Bye bye. Bye. All right. Hey, this has been the Life Radio Show. Susie, thanks for coming in. Uh, we're we're not done yet. We have more people coming in on this okay. fine Saturday, this fine, lovely Saturday. The great weather we have, and we're stuck in a little dark uh, it is comedy. So club, dark so. in here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. We'll be back here shortly. I need a break. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Life Radio Show podcast. Check it out wherever you listen to podcasts. Remember, if you want to listen live, we are on Tuesdays from 7 to 9 p.m. on WWSU 106.9 FM. You can also stream the show live at WWSU1069.org, and we go Facebook Live at the Life Radio Show's Facebook page. If you have suggestions or comments, feel free to email the Life 1069 at gmail.com. Overwhelms me. A brutal presence. You can kiss my ass. (laughs) Why am I here again? For the abuse? Yeah, pretty much. I can. uh, I'm recording all this, by the way. No. I hate it when you do that. (laughs) I'm never ready.